Hey everyone, I've gotten a couple of questions about my setup uh, over the years uh, of this build, so I just wanted to take a little bit of time and answer uh, some of those questions, walk people through the motor and the, the different systems. Figured it would be a little bit easier to do in a video than a, a big long wall of text on a thread somewhere. So I'll just take a few minutes um, and, and touch on the three uh, different systems, really the control system, so the sensors and the computer, the fuel system that I'm using, and then the, uh, the spark system that I'm using. So just uh, uh, to start off, this motor started as a generation one, just a typical carbureted generation one small block. Um, when I first owned this truck, I switched it over to a tune port injection system uh, and then sold it, uh, found this exact same truck again about seven years later, bought it back and then started the new build. The reason why I went with a motor like this um, instead of an LS for now is because number one, I already had the motor, had the trick flow heads that I had put on, liked them, had the camshaft that I liked. Um, so I already was a little bit invested in this. Um, number two is I wanted to do something unique. So LS motors are great, readily available, good efficiency, good power, nothing wrong with them. Totally recommend them for a build. But when you pop the hood, um, you know, more and more, especially as those motors become available, a lot of builds are using them. And again, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But I just wanted to try something unique so that uh, when you pop the hood on this thing, people pause for a second saying, oh, okay, what the heck is this? And uh, I, I think just based on some of the feedback I've gotten on the forums and some, okay, what is this thing exactly? Um, I, I think I'm going to accomplish my mission. So it won't look as clean, won't be as powerful, won't be as efficient as an LS. So it's, it's definitely a compromised build, but in terms of a little bit of uniqueness, um, I think it's, it's hitting where I want to there. So um, onto the three systems. So just keeping in mind, generation one, 350, uh, small block Chevy. Uh, so for the control systems, we'll start over here, and apologies for the mess. Um, mounted to the firewall here, um, and I'm just using 3M sticky tape right now, is a uh, Megasquirt MS3 system. So it's a kind of community built. I mean, there is a company behind it now, but um, a bit of an open source computer control system. A little bit cheaper than some of the uh, fully baked systems from um, like MSD and Holly. Um, but you have a lot of custom tuning applications, uh, custom tuning opportunities that you can use with this system. Um, so you can control anything from a you know one cylinder weed whacker with a little micro squirt system to you know, you name it, whatever you want. Um, one of the things that this system allows me to do is sequential fuel and sequential spark. So the TPI system that I had on here originally was a batch fire system, meaning that it would fire all the spark plugs on one side, all the spark plugs on the other side. It also used a distributor system, um, just like an old carbureted thing would, just with some added sensors. So you'd have one coil, all the spark plug wires, meaning that same coil would have to fire for everything. So no matter what build I wanted to do, I wanted to go to sequential fuel, sequential spark. The reason for that is you get more efficiency and you get more power, especially when you don't have one coil having to supply the spark for everything. Allows the, the coil to fire a lot less often, you know, one eighth the time actually, and uh, you get a more powerful spark out of that. So the rest of the control system that allows me to do that is um, number one, the uh, crank trigger system. So this is a 36 tooth wheel. I got this from DIYAutotune.com, the same vendor that I get the uh, MS3 and the MS3 wiring from. And same with this kind of Hall effect sensor. So essentially this wheel spins around and when the sensor picks up that there's a tooth missing, that knows, okay, this has made one full rotation uh, around. And then the other added sensor that allows um, sequential fuel and sequential spark to work is a distributor pickup sensor back here. So this just drops in in place of the distributor. It's got a four tooth wheel in there. And again, as it spins, it knows uh, when the camshaft has made uh, one full rotation. So the combination of these two sensors will tell the computer um, when each cylinder is at top dead center on its uh, compression stroke. And it will know to fire the, uh, the fuel injector and the spark for that. Nice thing about um, using this distributor pickup sensor instead of a regular distributor is that you don't have to drop it in any specific location. In the tuning application, you can actually tell it uh, where its orientation is. So if you don't hit, you know, traditionally when you did a regular distributor, you'd want the rotor pointing at the, you know, kind of the, the spark plug for the number one cylinder, assuming you had it in the top dead center position, that was kind of your starting location. 
This one, you just drop it in and you can tell it how many degrees plus or minus that uh, it needs to go to be, to be kind of at its true place. So other than that, most of the sensors are, are pretty much the same for a fuel injection system. You've got your coolant temp sensor, your air intake uh, temperature sensor that's on the underside of the, the manifold sticking up. Um, you probably can't, that's too dark in there, but you can see um, if it was lit, there'd be a probe that you could see in there. The computer itself uses manifold air pressure to determine how much air is coming in um, to calculate how much fuel you need. So there's no mass airflow sensor, so no sensor you have to have in front of the throttle body. That frees you up to, if you just want to run a filter right here, you can. I'm not going to do that because then you'd just be sucking in hot air from the irradiator. But it allows me to route things, you know, kind of however I want. I'll probably end up putting a box over here uh, because I did relocate my battery to the underside. So, um, on to the Spark system. So we touched upon the, um, the computer um, and the sensors that are going to do sequential Spark. What I've done to actually provide the Spark is I bought um, a set of eight LS2 coils. And then to mount these, this is just a, a regular, cheap, get it AutoZone Edelbrock uh, set of valve, uh, chrome Edelbrock valve covers. What I did is I uh, went up to the hardware store and I got some uh, like coupler nuts they're about that long, threaded on both ends, and um, I mounted one coil, held it to the valve cover, and then I would just tack it in, um, and then unscrew it, put the new coupler nuts on, move it over, tack it in, and then went through and welded all the coupler nuts. Then I just spray painted it. I'm actually going to rip these off and powder coat them um, before the build is done, um, but that's how I got the, uh, the coils mounted. Then what I did is I took my old MSD, so I had MSD wires on it already, um, just the full length ones that would run from the distributor. Took them off. I ordered a uh, spark plug crimping tool and um, new boots and essentially cut the wires and crimp the new boots on there and uh, just made shorty wires for them. Only thing I need to do now is um, in areas where this, uh, so you can see right here, um, because this is a 90 degree boot and the way the headers run, this isn't going to work. So I need to yank it off and do a, uh, a straight boot on there. There's also one on the other side that I need to do. So that covers the spark system. Now, lastly, the fuel system for this build. Um, and again, sorry for the mess. I'm using the truck to just, I'm, I'm doing a, a home project right now. So using some of the garage for wood cutting and everything, trying to cover this up so it doesn't dust too much. Uh, I'm running a Boyd's. Uh, aluminum tank, uh, remotely located. It, it comes with a uh, stealth fuel pump uh, in there. Um, running along the frame rail to a fuel lab filter, and right above it you can see the return line that goes back to the tank. So from that fuel lab filter, I come over here to uh, off the filter, and then it tees up here. The reason I have it tee up here is because I've read, and I, I can't validate whether or not it's true, but it, it made sense to me at the time, that it's better to provide both fuel rails with fuel equally rather than have the fuel circulate um, circulate all the way around. Um, because if it circulates all the way around, um, you know, whatever cylinders uh, on the end is, is you know, at, at risk of having less fuel. You know, if, if you've got an adequate fuel pump and a, you know, pressurized system, that, that's probably not going to happen. But um, it did make sense to me to, to run it this way, and it wasn't that much more work. So essentially what happens is the fuel goes to this fuel rail, comes in this line, tucks under the throttle body, goes into this line. They both exit out the back, and they both have lines that are not connected right now. Both lines from each fuel rail plug into this fuel pressure regulator. So this regulator, I've already started um, tapping the intake for it. It's going to mount to the intake. This is a bracket that I 3D printed. Um, so this will sit kind of like this off the intake once it's fully mounted. Um, I'll have a gauge that comes out here for fuel pressure. And then this line right here uh, mounts to the bottom of the uh, fuel pressure regulator, and that acts as the return line. So that's the fuel system right there. Um, and I think that pretty much covers it. Um, so again, DIY auto-tune for this part. Um, same for the sensor. The bracket that I, I made this, I'll probably be making a new one out of aluminum. Uh, and then the cam pickup sensor from uh, EFI connection. Coils, you, I think I got these on eBay. You can pretty much find LS2 coils anywhere. And then the rest of the sensors you can get, you know, Amazon, eBay, DIY auto-tune. Um, pretty much anything you need for fuel injection. And then the rest is... Some are racing for your intakes and all the other parts you need.
So if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments, uh, post them on the forum, uh, which I'll have uh, a link to my build uh, in the description for the video. And that's it. Thanks, everyone.